Well, Megan, I've been wearing Vionic shoes for over three years now, but this month, my trusted shoe brand and I entered a new phase of our relationship, international travel. Well, Sarah, that is a serious commitment, (laughs) right? You can't just pack any shoe for a trip abroad. It's got to be stylish enough for those major cosmopolitan cities. It's got to be sturdy enough for trains, planes, buses, and city streets. And obviously, it's got to be comfortable enough to support your feet over many, many miles of walking. Well, no surprise, my Vionics were up to the task. I had two pair with me, a pair of casual sneakers in a cool gray color, and then a weatherproof suede ankle boot that I swear still looks brand new after 10 days on soggy sidewalks. Megan, the only time my feet hurt the entire trip was New Year's Eve when I made the mistake of wearing a pair of booties not from Vionic. So I'll just leave that data right here for you. Okay, well, that's pretty conclusive, Sarah. Vionic has the best curated styles to get you ready for whatever 2024 has in store, whether it's jet setting like Sarah or keeping up with busy mom life on this side of the pond. They even offer a 30 day guarantee, wear them, love them or return them for a full refund within 30 days. And we've got a great deal for you. Use code the mom hour 15 at checkout for 15% off your entire order at vionicshoes.com when you log into your account. That's a one time use only. Bionic Shoes, wearable well-being for your feet. Hi, I'm Sarah. And I'm Megan. We're two moms with eight kids between us, from little to grown. We're in different areas of the country and in different stages of life. But we both know that motherhood's a lot easier when real moms share tips and encouragement. And remind you that it's really all going to be okay. We're not experts. We're parents who've been there. We're not perfect. We're real. Welcome to the Mom Hour. And welcome to episode 311 of the Mom Hour. I am Sarah Powers here with Megan Francis. Hey, Megan. Hey, Sarah. Happy Mother's Day week to you. Happy Mother's Day week to you. So if you're listening when this comes out, uh, Mother's Day is this coming Sunday. And by the way, if you're listening at some totally random time, stick around with us. And we are talking about Mother's Day today and specifically kind of how it can be complicated for a lot of people, cause some conflicted feelings maybe be disappointing some years and not all the time. Sometimes it's great. But I think one of the things, Megan, that we try to do on this podcast is just acknowledge the things that seem shiny, happy, obvious on the outside that when you become a mom, you're like handed this playbook where it's like, and you're supposed to love Mother's Day because you get flowers and everybody treats you special. And then I think we just try to like take the lid off that a little bit and not tell you that you have to feel differently, but if you do feel differently, right. it's okay. Yeah. Um, I have two thoughts about this. One is I think from you and I talking just recently and also just from like, you know, decades of talking to other people about Mother's Day, particularly mothers. I don't even know that there is a culturally accepted list of people we're supposed to celebrate on Mother's Day. So like yeah. I no longer have a mom. Um, And I don't even have a mother-in-law anymore. And I do have a stepmother and I do consider her in many ways to be like a mother figure, but like we don't have the kind of relationship where she and I are going to go get brunch on Mother's Day or something. And I find it interesting how the bar has been raised on who, how many people you're supposed to celebrate and whether because you're a mom, you get the celebrating or because you still have a mom. Now it's still your obligation to celebrate. Like how can there be a holiday where it's all supposed to be all about you being celebrated when also you are obligated to celebrate other people? Yeah. It gets a little bit complicated, right? So there's just that part. And I, I'm just putting that out there as a validating comment because I think that there often is that push-pull and that like sense of we don't actually know what was expected of us kind of a thing yes. um, I would during agree this with particular that. holiday. Yeah, I agree. And I wonder if if there has been an increase in like the sales and marketing aspects about yeah. around Mother's Day. I mean, I know we all know the phrase Hallmark holiday and that that's kind of like an antiquated phrase now of like, oh, it's just a holiday made up to sell Hallmark cards. Ha ha. But now there's so many more things to sell and there's so many more ways yeah. to reach people. Maybe it's always been like that. I mean, I'm thinking of like the jewelry commercials and like the mall jewelry yeah. stores. And it's at a time of year where there's not a lot of other gift giving holidays, but something smells like suspicious to me in terms of how we're being sold the con- like the consumer messages around Mother's Day. And so I, I always like to push back about that a little bit. And like exactly like you said, we're not even totally clear, like who's celebrating and who's being celebrated and what the what the relationship of 
human to human is in, you know, around right. other states. It's complicated. It is complicated. And, and all that to say, I love celebrating moms as many different moms as I can. And if I had the bandwidth, to celebrate my ex-mother-in-law and my stepmom and, you know, other women in my life. Like, that's great. And I don't think there's anything wrong with that. And I, I think sometimes people end up sort of like adopting someone who's not even a yeah. mom at all. And, and that's great too. But like the, the line that I don't like to cross is when it goes from something you voluntarily do because you want to, and something you have to do because like some entity that really has nothing to do with your life says you should. And I think that that is tricky for a lot of moms, especially new moms who've been yes. used to like, like celebrating their moms. And then suddenly they are a mom and they don't know what to do. I also just want to say really quickly that, um, I feel like last year, last spring for so many people really functioned well all year long, actually, as just as a reset where holidays looked different because we weren't obligated to do like anything. We've talked yeah. about that, like the COVID pass, right? So like holidays were different, vacationing, travel, seeing people that was all different. I saw a funny meme the other day that said something like, uh, I don't know, I'm dreading having to like um, not being able to say I can't because of COVID and then come right. up with my my petty false excuse or whatever. Yeah. And it just made me laugh because I'm like, I do feel like everyone kind of got a pass to not do stuff. But I also think that's an opportunity. So when we talk about the way Mother's Days have gone through our past, let's just remember that now we've learned that they don't have to be that. Yep. And we have a whole year of experience of something being very different. And now we have power to shape the future. So yes. this is like a, like a little learning lesson, like a little muscle flex yeah. of us doing it a different way and realizing like the world didn't fall apart and we yeah. can choose a different way going forward. I love that. I love that. Well, we are going to get into um, both some of the things that make Mother's Day hard, but then also some solutions for maybe reclaiming it a little bit this year. And like you said, Megan, taking this clean slate opportunity as an as a chance to make it just in very small ways. I don't mean like a huge big deal, but small ways to make it kind of more fit what sounds good to you this year. But before that, I thought I would ask you if you remember your first Mother's Day, Megan. Nope. Not, <laughs> not even a little bit. I don't remember it being important to me. Um, Jacob would so have you, been six months old. Yeah, no, that's what I was no gonna memory. say. No memory. No memory. I mean, he didn't buy me anything. I'm sure... I'm sure John gave me flowers or a card or something. I don't remember it. I guess it's never been one that was super important to me. So nope, nope, nope. Well, I, I do remember mine and partly because of the timing of uh, we're recording this on my oldest's actual birthday. I know we did an episode about how she's turning 13 and in the time space continuing, that's confusing, but we are recording this episode on her actual birthday and that year, and I think maybe this year, it's about 12 days from when Allegra was born until Mother's Day. So I had my first Mother's Day about 10 or 12 days postpartum. And so I remember it really well because we did try to go out to brunch and it, I, I tried to put on kind of a happy face and no clothes that fit. And I just, I thought I was supposed to really enjoy it. Um, I was very emotional. I've talked on the podcast before how I had a pretty significant case of the hormonal baby blues in mm. for like three weeks after my first baby, it did not progress into like postpartum depression later on. And it did lift, but it was a very like confusing time. And I was in the middle of that. So I was, things would make me cry, but I didn't even like feel like crying. It was really weird. Mm. I mean, anyone it's weird, but if you know what I'm talking about, you know what I'm talking about. So like things like heartfelt cards and like, I felt like everybody was looking at me cause I was this, I was experiencing my first mother's day. And so it was extra special. And I had this tiny baby. And, um, so it was not great. It wasn't miserable. Mm. Like I wouldn't say it was like the worst day ever, but it was just in a time that was really hard. And I felt like I was supposed to put on an outfit and take my baby out into the world. And it wasn't fun. Um, so I do remember the next year, um, having the kind of foresight to say, you know what, I'm, this is my do over first mother's day. Like last mother's day didn't count. I want to do over. And at that time I had a one-year-old. And the funny thing is, I don't remember anything about what that meant, like what we did. But right. I remember kind of like owning it and claiming it and feeling like, yeah, gosh, darn it. I do deserve to be celebrated. Last year was like totally confusing. And this year I deserve it. But I have no memory of what, what we what did. What you or, actually like, did. No, yes. no, but I, yeah. I just remember feeling like now I get it. Like now I want to be celebrated as a mom. 12 days in, I didn't know like which end was up. So it was it was kind of hard. I had forgotten all about this, but the only thing I do remember about my first Mother's Day, and the only reason I know it was my first Mother's Day is because I was living far away from my own mom, 
And I remember like trying to, this is before the, before you could really do stuff on the internet, you know, mm -hmm. like you couldn't easily order things and there was no Amazon prime. Right. Um, I remember trying to, my sister and I trying to like rally the two brothers to get my mom flowers sent to her house. None of us lived near her at the time. Mm. And like me feeling really resentful because I had a new baby or well, a newish yeah. baby. And my sister had little kids and like the boys didn't really seem to care. And yeah. I just felt like we should do something. And then me not knowing if the flowers would show up on a Sunday, they did. Um, and I think okay. we went through like FTD or, you uh -huh. know, like yeah. the, one the telefloor flowers. or whatever. Yes, 1-800 flowers. <laughs> and I'm sure my mom was like, oh, great. This is like a total last minute gift. But whatever. I, I think she appreciated it. But I do remember that feeling of stress and conflict. Like, who am I right now? Like, which mm -hmm. I don't remember yes. anything about what happened for me or what I did. But I do remember feeling like I can't really enjoy being the celebrated one because I still have someone I need to celebrate and like not being able to figure out how to make those two things go together. So yeah, yeah lots of pressure. Really, really, really normal. Sarah, you know, when someone's trying to sell me something, I can be pretty skeptical. Maybe it's my rebel tendencies, but having some healthy doubts has definitely kept me from wasting money on every cool product the algorithm sends my way. You know what's not too good to be true, though? Our sponsor, Ritual, and their clinically backed Essential for Women 18 Plus multivitamin. Yeah, Megan, that's so true. We both love these vitamins because they're made with high quality and traceable key ingredients in clean bioavailable forms. And they're gentle on an empty stomach with a fresh minty essence in every bottle. So you don't have to worry about nausea if you're a bit relaxed about when you take them. I'm also a big fan of Ritual's sustainability standards. They use scientific tools to select lower carbon packaging, prioritize sustainably sourced ingredients and set ambitious climate goals. No more shady business. Ritual's Essential for Women 18 Plus is a multivitamin you can actually trust. Get 20% off your first month for a limited time at ritual.com slash the mom hour. Start Ritual or add Essential for Women 18 Plus to your subscription today. That's ritual.com slash the mom hour for 20% off. We are welcoming a new sponsor today, Dr. Mom Butt Balm. Sarah, this might sound a little weird, but when my kids were babies, I actually really enjoyed changing diapers. It felt like a little time out to connect. Oh, yeah, Megan. I can totally remember that feeling of just kind of leaning in and enjoying a little moment in your routine. Yeah, but when my babies had diaper rash, it made the whole experience so much less fun for both of us. And back in those days, we didn't have great options for rash cream either. It was usually goopy, heavy, and full of dyes and preservatives and other things I didn't really want to put on my baby's butt. Well, the creator of Dr. Mom Butt Balm, who is a mom and also a doctor, had the same experience, Megan, and she did something about it. Dr. Mom Butt Balm is free of dyes, preservatives, and zinc oxide. It's easy to apply, easy to remove, and you don't have to use a lot to protect your baby's skin. I really love the way this balm feels. It's almost like a high-end skin cream. Very nice, no strong scent, and definitely nothing like the diaper rash creams I used to struggle with. Don't let diaper rash come between you and your baby. Shop for Dr. Mom Butt Balm online at Amazon or Walmart today. Okay, so Megan, I said to you the other day on Voxer that I am I consume so much like media in the parenting and motherhood space that this feels really obvious to me, but I don't think it's obvious to everybody if you're a newer mom. So I thought we could just name out loud some of the reasons that Mother's Day is really hard and complicated for different people. And if you don't see yourself in this list, that's great too. But I think um, it deserves to be said. So we'll just kind of go back and forth here. But a big one is that a day that places like a hyper focus on the role of motherhood just might be painful for a number of reasons. Like if you are not enjoying motherhood, if you are experiencing a hard time in motherhood, if you are trying to have a baby or adopt a baby or have lost a baby and are going through infertility or pregnancy loss, um, or some kind of trauma there. Um, if you have a complicated or a strained relationship with your own mom, or if you've lost your mom, um, it can be really painful. And then also, if you, just if you're going through a tough season of life or something else in your life is going, you know, like fantastically terribly like wrong, it can feel like a lot of pressure to put on a smile. Like I said before the break, like to put on an outfit and put on a smile and yeah graciously be celebrated. So it might be, it might have nothing to do with the complicated feelings of motherhood. It might just be that you lost your job or 
Right. That like something really hard is happening in your family or financial. And then on top of that, it's like this arbitrary day where you have to um, do all the things right. You have to smile at the cute kid cards and you have to go out to brunch. And all of that can be hard if you're struggling for any reason. So, I mean, that was a lot, but like, I think that covers a lot of people. And I think that's a reason a lot of people have trouble with this day. Yeah, those are all great. And I identify with several of those. Um, I think that another thing that I kind of already touched on is this, like, you've been doing it a certain way. It's like, and we've talked about this with lots of holidays, like the way you do Christmas often changes when you have a baby, like, because it has to, right? Like right. you can't necessarily go sleep in your mom's house at your mom and dad's house and then show up on Christmas morning in your pajamas in front of the tree when you have a baby and a husband or whatever. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Same thing. Like you might not want to do mother's day the same way it's always been done when now you are the mom, but I think it's so easy to get stuck in that role of caretaking the generation above you. And mm -hmm. I have taught, I have one friend in particular who I won't name by name, but she has every year is like, I don't want to go do brunch with my mom and then get in the car and drive an hour and go do brunch with my mother-in-law. I just want to stay home mm -hmm. and have someone bring me breakfast in bed or whatever. Yeah. And she's like, when will that ever happen? Because she feels so stuck in the way it's been done. It's like she maybe missed the window to change it when she mm -hmm. had little kids. And now there's like not really a good reason to change it because the kids are older, which is a good, which is just a reminder that sometimes like this is the time if you have little, little kids, a new baby, a baby and a toddler, something like that, this might be the opportunity to say, we have to change things and not let yourself now get like sucked in to like a, a just like an extended version of what you've always done. If that's yeah. no longer what, what serves you. Right. And there's so many assumptions that like, of course that would be fun. We're going to be all together. We'll get all dressed up. And like, yeah. it's easy to see how, like, if you, like you said, if you don't establish some boundaries or routines or rituals that are yours, it just could become the default. Yeah. Um, so I think another one, and I touched on this earlier too, is just, there is a lot of media coverage about Mother's Day. It feels like a lot, a lot, everything. And, and often in very cliche and kind of corny and unhelpful ways, I think. So I think that's hard in a couple of different ways. One, we talked about the sort of triggers for people who really have some pain around this day. So to be constantly reminded of it, um, having the commercials and the social media ads and like, gosh, don't you feel like everything is so yes. like targeted around Mother's Day? And I know yeah. that part of this is we're in this industry, but it just seems like it's an awful lot, which would be hard if it's already a hard day for you. But I think it's hard for another reason, too, is it it creates like this sort of branded assumption of what Mother's Day should look like, which can lead even if you're looking forward to Mother's Day and you don't have complicated feelings about it, it can then lead to disappointment because the media and the social media have told you that it's supposed to look like this and it's supposed to include breakfast yep. in bed and cute cards from your kids and your husband is or your spouse or your partner is supposed to drop everything and make you feel like a queen. And so then you're disappointed, not because Mother's Day is painful, but because you don't get the thing that you've been told right. you're supposed to get. And that's hard, too. And then, you know, I just think a, a subset of that is that, you know, social media comparison and competition we've talked about in a million different episodes. It can be really hard, especially when you're a vulnerable new mom figuring out your way. And then you start to see people's pictures of breakfast in bed or yes. like. Whatever I'm thinking of like the, I'm thinking of the beautiful brunch spread with like the, you know, handmade, um, yeah. note, uh, place cards and all that stuff. And it's yeah, like, like someone had to put that together. Yeah. <laughs> like someone did that spread and right. maybe that's not something you want to do and that's okay. Like it doesn't have to be picture ready. Right. Yeah. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. So I think that's another hard thing. So I have, when I was thinking about this question, Sarah, I had to laugh because I couldn't really put words to what I was feeling, but I think what I finally landed on is that I sometimes feel weird pressure to care if anybody mm -hmm. acknowledges me on Mother's Day when sometimes I just don't really care. And I just want it to be like a normal day. Like I just want to work because I have some stuff to do or I want to write because I feel like it or I want to hang out at home or I want to travel or I want to leave my kids and not be at home at all. Uh -huh. And I feel like I should care care more about what they want to do for me. Um, and like, I should want them fussed. Over. I want, I should want to be fussed over. And sometimes I truly just can't care about that. And then that feels weirdly like a failure, which is 
really, you know, backward <laughs> because it's all it should be all about me and what I want. So what if yep. what I want is not to do it at all? It's this weird like loop you get in that's very no, hard to get out of sometimes. I really relate to this so much. And I, I think I've said to Brian before, maybe Mother's Day or my birthday or another time. And I've said, you know what? I really like my normal life. Part of the reason why a normal day feels good to me is that I really like my normal life. And that's a good thing. So if I can have a normal day that maybe includes a few less dishes and like a little more alone time than normal yeah. and like some comfortable clothes and not having to like do anything like out of the ordinary. What I'm basically saying is I, I kind of like my life and I just, right. I just want I just a normal want day. Yes. Can I just have more of that please. Yes. Yeah. And, and then that, but I totally know what you mean about the like meta, the meta level above that, where you then sort of feel like you're letting the people down who want to honor you in a more traditional or like overt or ostentatious way. And then you and feel maybe bad they for don't letting care them either, down. Right. But like they feel like they should. So then it, again, the loop, like they feel like they should. So they do. Then you feel like you should care that they did. Yep. But neither one, neither party really cares or wants to do it. I, I think that that is probably one of the less talked about. Yeah. Um, not disappointments even. It's just like, ugh, it's a hassle. Well, okay. Yeah. And this, this really like leads right into the thing I wanted to talk about which is kind of my theory on on why this happens. And that is that on the one hand, we hope that others will maybe come through with surprises or treat us to, you know, a day that feels perfect or show us little thoughtful gestures. And I think a lot of moms kind of secretly hope that someone will come through with that, whatever that looks yeah. like in their mind. Um, and then on the other hand, we're not very clear with our people, with the people around us. And sometimes we're not even clear in our own heads about what would actually make that day special. And so we set ourselves up, I think, accidentally uh, for disappointment because the the outside world has told us like what we should expect on Mother's Day. We're a little confused about if that's actually what we want. And then we also don't say anything to anybody because there's right. like this weird hope that someone will read our minds and it'll just happen. Remember when you asked, I think it was in the Facebook group about stockings and how yeah. moms shared about their disappointment on Christmas morning with no one filling their stockings. This reminds me a little bit of it. It's like, we just still hope that Santa Claus will just fill our stocking in the end. And then we're yeah. disappointed when he doesn't. But I think that's what this episode, like that's where this tension is, is we also like, we never told anybody what we wanted and maybe we right. weren't even clear ourselves. So it's complicated. Yeah. It, it's well, okay. So, you know, there's that saying that unmet expectations or, you know, happiness is when expectations are met or reality meets expectations and that unmet expectations are basically just the antidote to happiness. Like they are the, you can't, you can't be content when you have expectations that aren't met. And I would say it's even worse when you don't actually know what you expect yes. because then you, you can't even put words to it. You don't even know why you feel uh, let down. And I've definitely felt this like, truly, I don't really care that much about Mother's Day. I don't, I certainly don't care enough to almost look uncool enough to ask anyone to go out of their way to get me flowers or, you know, make me breakfast in bed or whatever, because on the surface, it's like whatever. Right. But at the same time, I'm still kind of hoping on some level that I just get blown away yeah. and that some magical thing happens all on their own because it's not the stuff. It's not the flowers. It's not the breakfast. It's the being thought of. And then I feel like mm -hmm. if I have to tell them what to do, that yeah. eliminates the joy I would actually get, which is just being spontaneously and organically thought of. So I don't even know what the magical, amazing surprise would be. So it's not even like I'm actively disappointed that I didn't get something I want. It's more like I'm just like, always hoping for a little more somewhere in the back of my mind. And that, I mean, I don't know how to get over that because it's not, I don't truly want to go to my kids and tell them what I want for Mother's Day. Like, I don't right. want to do that. I don't want to care, <laughs> you know? Right. But at the same time, I also don't want to like feel vaguely let down. Yeah. So it's a hard one. I don't know. It, it is hard. I think for me, I have gotten a lot better over the years and we're going to talk about this a lot more in the second half, but of just answering the question, like, what do you want for Mother's Day? What do you want for Christmas? What what would make Sunday special? And I, you know, I think 
I'm lucky to be in a family where, you know, sometimes we do ask that and um, I'm able to say, you know, I'd really like a normal day and a nap or like I'd really yeah. like um, some some time by myself. But there's a lot of guilt. I think moms have a lot of guilt in asking for or identifying the need for time away from their kids. And then you see it in funny memes all over the Internet. Like what I really want for Mother's Day is not to mother these children right. for a few hours or 24 hours or a weekend. And then, of course, the amount of like societal guilt and pressure heaped on moms who say that for Mother's Day, they don't want to be with their families is right. like it kind of becomes like a joke. But I think it's a joke because there's some real actual tension there between if that is what we really want, that's hard to come out and say, especially on a day that's been like sort of like created with this in this image of a much more public or like communal celebration. So I guess I'm just here to validate anybody who wants to be by themselves all day on Mother's Day. I, I want to say a few years ago, I traveled on Mother's Day. I believe I traveled on Mother's Day and that my kids gave me a hard time about it. Like my older kids, like, I can't believe that you would not even be with your kids on Mother's Day. I'm like, well, I, I can, cause yeah. it's supposed to be what I want. Right. Like it just, I, and they weren't, they didn't care either. They weren't really being serious. They were just ribbing me. But I do remember thinking how weird I'm doing exactly what I want to be doing right now. There happened to be something. I don't remember now what it was, but something that I wanted to do on Mother's Day that didn't involve being around my kids. And that felt so weird. Cause it, yeah. and then the implication is it's not really mother's day. It's like mom being a mom day. And that right. those are two pretty different things. Yeah. I think. Yeah, yeah. I agree. Sarah, when my kids were little, I was always pretty torn on whether to give them a daily multivitamin. I knew that modern kids diets have some pretty big nutritional gaps, but I also knew that most children's vitamins are basically candy in disguise. They're filled with sugar. They have all kinds of chemicals and preservatives in them. And I was like, why would I give these to my kids? Luckily, two dads recognized the problem and came up with a solution. Haya, the pediatrician approved, super powered, chewable vitamin. Haya fills in the most common gaps in modern children's diets to provide the full body nourishment our kids need with a yummy taste they love. Formulated with the help of nutritional experts, Haya is pressed with a blend of 12 organic fruits and veggies, then supercharged with 15 essential vitamins and minerals, including vitamin D, B12, C, zinc, folate, and many others to help support immunity, energy, brain function, mood, concentration, teeth, bones, and more. Your first shipment comes with a cute bottle that has fun stickers your kids can use to decorate it too. My kids always loved that. And we've worked out a special deal with Haya for their best-selling children's vitamin. Receive 50% off your first order. To claim this deal, go to HayaHealth.com slash MomHour. This deal is not available on their regular website. Go to H-I-Y-A-H-E-A-L-T-H dot com slash MomHour and get your kids the full body nourishment they need to grow into healthy adults. Okay. So depending on when you are listening to this, it might just be that Mother's Day is like a day or two away. It might be that Mother's Day is already passed and that's okay too. Um, but most of these ideas for making your Mother's Day what you want, I think could be pulled off with very little time left. And if it is like November and you're listening to this, write yourself a little note, like put it in your planner or like set a little reminder for yourself. Um, Cause I'm just a big fan of mom's like asking for what they want, declaring what they need. And I think a lot of us are surrounded by people who, who want to help and want to be supportive. Um, but we get stuck in the asking. So this yeah, is our agreed. big permission slip. Um, okay. So I have a few, few ideas here. Um, and the first one I did this last year, and that is to buy yourself something. I do not really like getting gifts for Mother's Day. I mean, I like a breakfast or a brunch and the sweet notes from school. I love that, but I, it doesn't feel like a gifty holiday for me. And it feels uncomfortable right. to like have my family buy me stuff, but I do like to buy myself stuff. And spring just feels like one of those times a year where there's like a lot of home products I might have my eye mm. on, or like, it's like a, just a fun season. So last year, um, in COVID, I bought myself a set of four stemless wine glasses from anthropology. They weren't terribly expensive. Um, but I just wanted them for my like glass of white wine in the evenings. I didn't even buy a big enough set to like have a dinner party because it was COVID and I figured that was never happening again. And I love them, Megan, you'll have them. We'll, we'll have wine together when you're here. Um, but they Yay. like have like sparkly gold, like very subtle sparkly gold flecks at the bottom, but they're otherwise very classic. 
and I didn't have stemless. I had mostly stemmed wine glasses. So, and I still remember that. I remember it like a gift I would have received from someone else. And I totally bought it for myself. It didn't arrive in time for Mother's Day, I don't think. I was just like, hey, don't get me anything. I bought myself these wine glasses, which by the way, I mean, I could have bought them for another, like at another time of year, but something about declaring it was a gift for myself just felt really good. Um, and I still think of that. I think this was my Mother's Day present to myself last year. So I, I like that. I think I'll do that again. I love that. And I actually think that like one thing that feels very luxurious to me is having time like on a Sunday afternoon to just go browse a store, uh, mm-hmm. a store that you have no reason to be in for anything besides yourself. Like, you know, some, like a women's clothing boutique or someplace, you know, not the big box store where you're really ostensibly there to buy your family stuff and maybe you're going to walk through the home goods section or something, but like the expensive candle shop in town, yeah. whatever it is, a bookstore, um, just browsing that feels very luxurious. And that is also an experience gift you can give yourself. So I really like that idea. Yeah. Yeah. I highly recommend it. Um, okay. So my next one is even if you like surprises and like Megan, you said, you're sort of hoping that your family will come through for you and, and blow your mind on mother's day. For me, it's helpful to get a sense for what's on the schedule and then and match that up to what you know about yourself. So like if your family's planning a big brunch and it's like that's all the extra version that you're going to want for that day, that's a good time to be like, hey, I, I think I might want a nap or I'd love to like sit out in the backyard and read my book for a little while. You don't have to be saying like, I don't <laughs> I don't want to see my children on Mother's Day, but um looking ahead at what's planned or if there's nothing planned, that's an opportunity for you to maybe just, you don't have to plan the whole day or say exactly what you want to do hour by hour, but make sure that whatever is on the schedule kind of matches up with your energy patterns or what you think you're going to want to do that day. You mentioned like working and creativity, Megan, like you might have a lot of energy on Sundays and, and get a lot of joy out of like tidying the house, listening to music by yourself. And like, no one would think a mom should tidy the house on Sunday or like on Mother's Day. But if that if that makes you feel good on a Sunday morning, like you still get to ask for that. A hundred percent agree. And actually, there is something super glorious, especially when you have little kids about them disappearing and getting yeah. out of the way so that you can fold laundry or putter or clean up the kitchen or whatever it is. Right. And I actually think tidying in those circumstances can maybe with a mimosa in your hand, maybe with not with a mimosa in your hand, but can feel extremely luxurious and like self-care. So uh, I would totally like say, yeah, it could look real different for you. It does not have to look the way it looks in a commercial. Yes. Um, And it doesn't have to be like the same old, same old cliches. It it can be however you want it to be. I agree. I agree. Well, here's another one. Um, I think in different seasons of life, we've talked about friendship lately. And if you have a circle of friends, either long distance and virtual or in your neighborhood, I love the idea of doing something, maybe not on Mother's Day, maybe it's on the weekend, maybe it's on Sunday, where you're actually communing with other mothers. I My most um, positive feelings about Mother's Day are often not about my own mom or my own children. They're about this kind of like sisterhood of motherhood. And there are, I do get the feels about that. It is, it is a kind of club or I I don't like that word. It sounds like exclusive, but you know what I mean? There's, um, there's a common experience that a lot of us are going through and taking time to recognize that in some way could be really fulfilling on Mother's Day. If that sounds good to you, if it doesn't don't, but things I'm thinking of is like, you could, you could go for a walk with a bunch of mom friends in the morning and like, have that be, instead of your breakfast in bed, you're out in nature with other moms and you're kind of like laughing and comparing notes. And you're sort of like doing motherhood together in a way that I I really like that idea. Um, our friends at coffee and crumbs, Ashley Gad and her team have done over the years, a mother's day brunch where they supply, like you can, you can download or I think it's even free. Um, you can get their kit to host a little Mother's Day brunch. And last year, I know it was all virtual and I'm not sure how it looks this year, but they've basically facilitated moms having a small gathering with other moms for this purpose, like to toast to each other in a group setting. And I just love that. So if you've never done something like that and that sounds more fun to you than say hanging out with your mother-in-law or like you're, you're really like screaming toddler, 
then go for it. Like organize yeah. a thing, book a book a pedicure for six women or whatever, like whatever it is. But I think there's, I think I would like to do more of that actually. But it could look like going for a hike. Like it doesn't even have to yeah. be a big scheduled thing. It, and I think that this is something I know, Sarah, you touched on this already. And I, and I know we'll probably hit this again. Sometimes the asking for what you want can be really tricky because you don't always know what you're going to want in advance. And what if yeah. the day comes along and you don't want that thing <laughs> that you thought you might want? So sometimes like I'm a big fan sometimes of just leaving things loose and like having people that you have like a sort of a flexible schedule, like a flexible plan with like, hey, let's text each other, you know, after church or after we get done with this other thing or after we have a leisurely um, morning lying around in our pajamas, like whatever that looks like. Let's get in touch around two in the afternoon and see what we want to do. And and maybe there is something that they, that you want to do. Um, but I don't I don't want anyone to put the expectation that you have to know way in advance unless it's something that's going to require a lot of planning for for your people. Right. Right. And and likely you will be among friends who have a similar experience and you know, also would love to just have that touch point in the day somehow. I think because right. Mother's Day is thought of as like a traditional holiday, we think we're supposed to spend it with our immediate and extended family, um, like Thanksgiving or Christmas or, you know, whatever else. But like, why can't it? It's like a Galentine's Day. Like right. it, it can be about friends, I think, too. Yeah, um, I love that. Well, this might not be for everyone, but I want to throw it out there. And that is that if I love I love those caveats. (laughs) Yeah. Well, none of these need to be for everyone. But if social media is making your heart hurt a little bit, Mm. I would recommend signing out completely, deleting the app from your phone for, you know, a few days before Mother's Day and maybe a couple of days after. I think there's a there's a good like lesson in boundaries and self-care when we do that. It's declaring like I'm not pretending this doesn't exist. I know that people are sharing things that might trigger hard feelings for me. Like I'm not hiding or somehow running away. I'm just choosing not to consume that in, in a fire hose setting for the, the few days or week around mother's day. And I think if you, sometimes we wait till it's too late to realize like that probably would have been a good idea. So, um, I think if you're listening to this on Tuesday and you think that might help, or maybe you sign out just for Sunday because you'd rather yeah. be present with your book. You'd rather do more reading and resting and napping than get caught in the mindless scroll um, and get kind of caught up in like what other people's brunches look like. So maybe it's just as simple as signing out just for the Sunday so you can be more present with your family. But if you really do have some complicated feelings and if the social media stuff is hard for you, like you're, you're in charge, you can completely remove that and it will be there when you come back. And it's not like some giant life change you have to announce to the world. Just Take a pause. Yeah. Um, I I know we are both big fans of social media detoxes uh, regularly. And I think that anytime there's a loaded holiday or a loaded event, that's a particularly good time to do it. And if you decide, if you don't think it's necessary, but you get, it gets to be two o'clock on Sunday, you know, uh, Mother's Day Sunday, and you're finding that you're doom scrolling or just yeah. like, you can't stop, perpet- like you can't stop refreshing you, it's not too late. Like you can do it then too. You could take a three hour fast. Like it yes. doesn't have to be a whole thing. Um, I wanted to quickly mention, cause I know this is something that I had completely forgotten to like put in this outline. So, um, you're not expecting this Sarah, but I just no. want to make a note that like, not everybody has a support system or people to ask for anything like on mother's day at all. Mm-hmm. So if you're a single mom, say of a two-year-old who's not, I don't think going to get you a present. I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm very, very sorry to announce this to you, but I don't think your two-year-old or your infant um, are going to make you breakfast or any of those things. I would also just think ahead of time about like, not even just along the lines of only like giving yourself a gift, because that's one thing, right? But like creating an experience for yourself, like is there someone more, um, a little more a non-orthodox that you could lean on for something, someone to mm-hmm. take the little one for an hour so you can have some time to yourself and, and maybe try to think about that in advance. So it doesn't jump. So you don't end up on Sunday, mother's day, Sunday feeling like, I don't know, like you didn't like you, like no one's celebrating you and it's too late to do anything about it. Yeah. Um, because I think, especially if you're like a working mom and you've got little kids and all this stuff, it's sometimes it can slip. But even if the little thing, like having the right groceries in the house to make yeah, yourself an amazing breakfast yeah. or like to make yourself a mimosa or, um, 
having put in an order online a few days in advance so that you wind up with like something showing up on your door on Saturday or Sunday, that can feel so good. And it does take a little bit of forethought, but some people, some moms just don't have someone else doing that for them. So yep. like be your own best advocate, you know, in those, I, I'm in those so ways. glad you said that. Um, and I totally agree. So here's another thought, and I would like to personally be better about this. Um, I think sometimes if you're in a blah season or kind of spinning your wheels or not feeling particularly engaged, um, doing something for someone else can be a real, I don't know, you've been doing, you've been doing so many great interviews on Mother of Reinvention, Megan, and it's got me thinking about just the way that, um, doing things for other people can enrich our own lives. And I know like we know that and science tells us that, but if Mother's Day is not feeling, if you're not feeling particularly connected to Mother's Day, I wonder if there's a way to think outside yourself and your little bubble and see if like some little act of service in some way just could help you reconnect to kind of the meaning of the day or create meaning in the day for yourself. Cause I don't think there's any one meaning for this day. So that might look like donating to an organization that supports moms. It might even just be writing some notes to women in your life who aren't your mom or your stepmom or your mother-in-law, but who have made an impact on you and sort of like, you know, brightening, brightening people's days with an unexpected text or note and sort of thinking outside yourself a little bit. Um, a lot of this episode has been about thinking about what we do want, what we do need. And I'm all for moms claiming that and identifying that. But I think um, we have a lot to be gained from looking outside our little bubbles as well. And so I guess that was a little bit vague, but I, I'd love to hear other ideas too for ways that you could, you know, bless other moms this Mother's Day. Yeah, I mean, I think that like doing things, like I'm thinking to myself, if I was like in the situation where someone showed up and did that thing for me that I did not want to do for myself, and maybe that would mean, in my case, it could mean sending a teenage boy over to mow someone's lawn. Like, I mm -hmm. think you can get really creative about that kind of thing. Like, what are the things that are a drain or a drag for moms in different seasons of life? And is there a, th is that maybe not something that's a drain or a drag for you because you're in a different season of mm -hmm. life or because you have access to a resource that they might not or a human resource that they might not. And just, I mean, I think we could go down lots of rabbit holes with that, but thinking kind of creatively about that. I think there are so many ways to take burdens off of people. And honestly, being unburdened is like the best gift when you're a mom, right? Like yeah. having some, some emotional labor taken off your plate um, that you maybe didn't even realize was as heavy as it was. Yeah. Yep. I totally agree. Um, well, the last thing I wanted to kind of banter about, and actually we touched on this earlier, is that like, you don't have to do Mother's Day. Like there's no it's not required. Just like you right. don't have to do Elf on the Shelf or I don't know. What are the other things we've told people they can opt out of? School pictures? Like the, <laughs> there's these I feel like we're that... all we do is talk about things we can opt out of. Yes. 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 Yeah. We are, we're pros at that. Um, but like really, even though we've already touched on how it can be a normal day, but truly just a reminder that as you build your family culture around rituals and holidays... And whether you're partnered and have a partner that you're going to dialogue with about these things or whether you're making the decisions like I really, really want to emphasize like you don't have to celebrate Mother's Day at all or you can declare it to be like the day that you always do something crazy like, you know, like road trip to the next town and get donuts and come home. And like it, it's its own thing and it doesn't have to look anything like what anything you've ever seen on the media. So it's I guess yeah. just to underscore that you can really think way outside the traditional box if it doesn't feel like it's a day that's fun for you. Yeah. And again, this can also change year to year. Like you could try it one way one year and then you could be like the next year you could say, oh, I liked one thing we did about it last year. I wish I hadn't completely opted out. Like I would have still liked to have a special, you know, cup of tea brought to me or whatever. Yeah. And then you, and so you can play with it. Like we talk about this a lot too, Sarah, like just because a tradition has been set does not mean it is set in stone forever. Um, traditions themselves are flexible and plastic and can change over time and should change over time. So all of those things, um, you know, you don't have to do it, but you can also choose the amount to which you opt out or opt in and it can yep. change year to year. Totally. I totally agree. You know what part of Mother's Day that I 
wish would continue forever that I think is almost what? done for me is the things the kids fill out at school. Yes. That say like my mom is blank years old and my mom's favorite that. food. It is yes. like if you are in those and hopefully most kids are starting to be back in school in some capacity now. I mean, hold on to those. They're so cute. Yeah. Brian is really sweet because he's even like printed them for the older kids uh, like a few times when they've kind of aged out. But Violet's still doing them. So Violet's in second grade. I, I feel like there, it, there's a chance that it happens for one or two more years for me. I, every teacher is different, um, but they're so cute. Like I feel like Clara did like, them right up until fifth grade. Not yeah. the, not like what you're talking about. Not the ones where it's like filling in the blanks and stuff like yeah. that, but Definitely bringing home a little paper sack with a little clay animal yeah, or some little picture of herself. Seeds, seeds kids. to plant yes. or something. Yes. Like something like that came home with my kids all through elementary school. And I, I will say like this, well, last year, of course, because of COVID, none of that happened at the end of the year. So I missed, I really missed the last, my last year of yeah. all the rituals of the last year of um, having an elementary school kid just didn't happen for me. But uh, it is so different now. And I'm like, I was thinking about that while we were talking like, oh, but I'll, you know, no matter what, even if no one gets me anything, I'll have something to open on Mother's Day. And then I'm like, oh, no, I won't because the school's not doing it this year. So my kids will. And usually John is pretty good about having them do something for me. Um, that's one thing I cannot complain about my ex-husband. Like we're we typically make sure the kids acknowledge each other on those holidays. Yeah. Um, but at the same time, it's just not it's just not the same. You know, it's like, yes. it's not the same as the kids bringing something home that they made with their little handies in school I, or with their I little brains. It. So it's, yeah, it's our first year at this elementary school. So I don't know what there will be, but I really hope there's a fill in the blank one that says yeah. I'm like 67 years old or whatever. <laughs> I, I mean, the older or the like kids the recipe, get, like yeah. the way you make something or oh, like, yeah. I don't know. There's always a picture of mom's drinking too much wine. It's always funny yeah. when those end up going around on the internet. Yeah. It's always funny. And I have some really cute ones too. So, um, well, I think we will wrap up by just wishing everybody the happiest of mother's days. However, that, However looks, that looks for, for you. you. We're about to say the exact same thing. Yeah. yeah. Um, yeah. We will continue this conversation in the Facebook group this week because I feel like um, there'll just be lots more to chat about leading up to Mother's Day. And that's a really supportive place to get validation from other moms. If you're not in that group and you're interested, we'll link it up in the show notes. Um, oh, and this coming Friday, I have a voices interview up with Kelly Hiltz, who's a kindergarten teacher. She's been on the show before talking about getting kids ready for kindergarten and she's back because COVID messed with a whole bunch of people's plans about preschool okay. and kindergarten yeah. and first grade. So we really like kind of talk everybody off the ledge a little bit about kids who might you might be feeling that they're behind or they're not ready for kindergarten. And she'll talk about what COVID has been like as a kindergarten teacher, what things have happened this year and how she's adjusting for next year. And I just think it's going to reassure a lot of people if you have kids in the anywhere from the preschool through early elementary school ages. So come back for that on Friday. And Megan, this was fun. Yeah. Talk to you soon. Hi friends, Megan here. I wanted to let you know about a new podcast I've just launched called The Teas Made. Think of it as a weekly cozy conversation with me over your favorite hot beverage on topics like wellness, creativity, family, hospitality, and more. Just look for The Teas Made with Megan Francis wherever you get your podcasts or head to theteasmade.com to find all those episodes. The Teas Made is your reminder to take a little break from the busyness of life. So come on in and get comfy. The Teas Made. The Mom Hour is brought to you by partners like The Essential Calendar. The Essential Calendar makes beautiful, minimalist, poster-sized calendars that show an entire season at a glance so you can see and plan for the big picture. If you're looking ahead to 2024 and have big plans you want to see all in one place, visit theessentialcalendar.com slash themomhour. You'll save 10% off your purchase when you visit that link or use code themomhour at checkout. Again, that's 10% off our favorite seasonal calendars at theessentialcalendar.com slash themomhour.